If I would rather choose a hot body or my ideation skills. And not saying that your body is not hot. You do have a hot body. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, that just got... <laughs>
23. Mm. Um, 2023 overall was a very challenging year for me. So, but I would say like near the beginning, I felt for a good like maybe four or five months, I felt very content prior to that. What do you think made that period of time content for you? Content, I think because I was starting a new relationship and there's a lot of the like, mm. um, you know, excitement. like the excitement yeah. around starting a new relationship and uh, not just the idea of it and the romantic butterflies of another person, but also just like there's new activities. You're like mm. meeting new people. You're trying new things together. Um, so I think there's something about novelty mm. that really does bring a level of like contentment for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I liked the deeper probing. I appreciated that. Yeah. Dang. All right. Okay. Now I'm okay. okay. Ooh, now I'm nervous. I'm put, uh-huh. I don't know where to put this. I'm going to shoot. Yes. Yeah, just just it. It up. <sighs> okay. We all know you love ABG a lot, but capital B-U-T, <laughs> if capital I, <laughs> you weren't doing ABG full time, what job would you pursue? Ooh, this is a very good question. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know who asked this. Um, I think, you know what's funny? I think if it wasn't for ABG, I would probably be doing my finance job mm-hmm. and would have probably continued to pursue it perhaps in a different industry. Mm-hmm. I think that for me was something where I felt comfortable with what I was doing. I felt like I had built up the technical know-how and the knowledge and was able to execute well on it, but I just wasn't happy with the environment. Mm -hmm. So that was a thought that I had of, oh, maybe if I go to like a Nike or, Mm -hmm. you know, a Facebook or Meta or Google or something like that and worked in-house within their M&A department, like I would be much happier there Mm -hmm. perhaps. Definitely could see that. Yeah. So that was actually a a conversation that I had, I was having with like Philip and, and thinking about, you know, making those, those inroads, but um, ABG came along and this was actually probably the better, you know, outcome of my choosing a career for me. So yeah, that's probably what I would be doing. I forgot that you were exploring this option before. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think it's just the environment that would have changed things for Mm. me, but I really did enjoy my finance job. I felt like I love Excel. I love doing all of that stuff. So that that hasn't changed. Hmm. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I know. Oh, oh Mel Mel. Shit. Okay, I see one that's... Okay, I'll just go for it. Holy F. Oh, this one was the taped one. Okay. Oh, that's long. You have mentioned on the podcast in the past that you feel guilty that you don't wake up excited to work on ABG every day. In those moments, if you could do anything other than ABG as your work career, what would it be? Similar question. Let me read this one more time. processes. I think about this a lot too. I know one thing that I probably would stick in is social media marketing. I think that's like my skill and my industry through and through. The thing I go back and forth on is like, what kind of company do I want to work for? Because Mm -hmm. I realize I don't think I would necessarily go to a product driven company. I would Mm -hmm. still want to find a way working in media. Like I think a lot about how we work with Netflix Golden or like a different like like a streaming site mm-hmm. that I enjoy their content. Yeah. So I'd probably, if I had to choose, a, I guess a different career, it would still be in social media, but in like still in media. I could see that. That makes a lot of sense. You have such a passion for just the industry in itself yeah. in any format. Do you think you would wake up happy in those mm. jobs? Here's the thing. And I, I, I think you're always going to reach a point of like, this feels like a job. Like, I'm not going to yeah. always feel like, I love my job. And I think that's something I'm really aware of. Like, I already know too, if I go to those companies, I feel like it'd be a temporary high of like, I like this. It's new. It's fresh. I'm getting paid. Woof. Uh, and then like, also, I mean, you get paid here too. Just <laughs> no, we get paid at, no, we get paid at ABG. But I think it just, it's like, it definitely nice feels cushy, like. nice cushy, cushy corporate. It's a cu- yeah. I never had a cushy, cushy corporate job. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think I would be living in that moment for a little bit and it's going to, the, the charm is going to fade. I think that's always yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the norm though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I don't want to say, as I'm saying this, I don't want you to think like, oh, ABG, I'm like so over it. It's not that. It's just yeah. finding ways to like still be excited about the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I think you're being real with yourself too, that mm-hmm. yes, even if you are pursuing your passion project that is ABG, you're not going to wake up every day excited and happy yeah. and ready to work. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just tasks we have to get through. Yeah. Taxes and shit, you know? (laughs) I still need to read that. (laughs) But good question. Mm. Okay, so now we have a communal pile for ABG. And um, we'll see who answers these or if all three of us do. But I will pick it. Okay. So this question says, we recently went to a law firm event. 
okay, this was a, an event where we were celebrating our friend who's being installed as the president of her bar association. Very proud of her, Mimi. Hello, if you're watching. Very proud of you. She had two tables that were for her friends. And these were us slash non-lawyer people. Yes. I would say most of our, her friends were in the creative field. A little more rowdy, a little bit more um, screechy when we were screaming <laughs> for her. Dressed in... Kind of different, more bright and party like attire. <laughs> yes, yes. We were wearing, we were showing our shoulders. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. It said cocktail attire. That's what I'm saying. Our interpretation. I mean, I thought we looked. I thought it looked fun. I was happy and it's yeah. like celebratory. But, but then when we looked around, everyone had suit jackets on. And we're like, yeah. And ah, they were shit. in like the, you know, the like navy blues and the grays and stuff. And we're like, yeah. oh, yes, did not we were get in the memo. florals. <laughs> um, and so people, people were referring to us as influencers mm -hmm. at the event. I think there were a couple of ABG fans. Hello, if you're watching. And um, you know, we, they, we were introduced as podcasters, and then their friend perhaps would be like, oh, so you guys are influencers. I think I heard that like two or three times mm, yeah. during that event. How does that term make you feel to be called an influencer now that you are a public figure? I have mixed feelings about this term. I think I, I, I accept it because I feel like that's like the general normalized term to address all of us as a whole. And I think as, I think when you say podcaster, sometimes people won't know what that means or like, there's so many different terminology within the creative space. They might not know. So when I say influencer, I think that's just for them to understand what world we're in. For But for me, I, I still feel a little bit of cringe hearing that term. I think it's maybe because I was doing media and everything else before that term really came to like, was like pu more public or more like popular. I think in general, people like the term creator more mm. because... I feel like that's what we do. We create content for people to listen to. Again, I also feel this space is really big. And you could also say that we're influencers because we also influence people to listen to our podcast. I don't know. Yeah. But I think overall, I still feel kind of more like I like the word to term creator more mm -hmm. um, versus an influencer. But I also think maybe it's because in my, my role, I'm a social media marketer and I'm a podcaster. Like that's what I identify more as. Similar to Mel, I have kind of like mixed mixed emotions and like a mixed reaction to this term. Um, I want to preface this by saying I have been in LA for a couple of years and uh, predominantly also in the like app dating world. Mm. I feel like there is a general pop culture consensus that like girls who are, you know, mm. titled as influencers or guys or whoever like that, that's like not a real job. And it's like, oh, this is an influencer. And so it has a lot of kind of like negative connotation attached to it in the LA world specifically around dating. But when I was doing a little bit more thinking about this, I feel like influencer, like on the one hand, on the surface, you think of it stereotypically as someone who's like trying to sell you stuff, someone who's, I don't know, it's kind of like, um, you know, very shallow and into their looks and they're showing very shallow and surface content, right? But much like what we are doing with the term of ABG or Asian boss girl, it's mm. taking something that has a certain surface interpretation, recognizing a core like value of it and then trying to flip it. And that's where it's like influent, like being an influencer means that sure, you, you know, it does involve like selling products and pushing things. And, but at the end of the day, it is about like, you have influence and you have the ability to affect how people, um, you have the ability to affect like what people listen to, how they feel, how they feel about themselves, um, you know, like how they feel about different topics. And that's like the real that's the part that I, I focus on. So it's kind of like ABG where it's like you you want, we were trying to flip the, the narrative. The narrative. narrative, yeah. And I see both sides of that. So I actually, that made me step back and reflect, like I shouldn't judge other people who call themselves an influencer. Mm -hmm. Like there is, that can mean so many things, right? I think just socially though, there is usually a negative connotation, but it's true. You have influence and like you have the ability to do with it what you want and hopefully you Mm -hmm. find something in it that's meaningful mm. i would agree with this i feel like we're talking about this a lot but i do have thoughts on this yeah, as well yeah. i also would prefer to call myself a content creator mm -hmm. if anyone were to ask me or i sign like a contract or something mm -hmm. i write my name and it's like what's your title i'm like content creator that is what i put down yeah, i put founder <laughs> oh, you do? oh interesting okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that makes sense or if Podcaster. it's like something for yourself if you get a branded partnership for yourself you put founder of yourself i just you technically are founder of your own brand true. i just i should I didn't have to sign anything. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but like what we do here at ABG with the podcast, with like curating a newsletter or social media assets or con this is all content creation, right? It's nothing new. It's been done for centuries. I think the difference is that we don't have a corporate branded name behind us for mm -hmm. someone to say, oh, there is some level of like 
mass or scale or I guess legitimacy behind that. So you wouldn't call those people influencers. But for us, because we kind of grew this business from ground up and we've been self-sufficient, there is something with that self-sufficiency that does require for us to have these branded partnerships. And I think a lot of people associate influencers with like branded partnerships. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, all of the content that influencers put out there, it's free, right? Whether it's on Instagram or on YouTube or podcasts, it's all free unless it's behind a paywall or it's a subscription-based service, which which we don't have yet. It is free, but that is how we are able to support ourselves unless we take on investor money, mm. you know? So the thing with the term, I wouldn't deny that we are influencers. I think if people were to say that, I'd be like, yeah, content creator, but yes. But I think the thing that kind of irks me about the term is that so much of what we're putting into ABG and what we're doing has a very authentic and pure and intentional way of going about the company. But if you were to use the term influencer, it gets muddled down into a more superficial mm. term, into one word, right? And that's that's the only thing where I'm like, no, but we're doing so much more. But it's I understand too, that is like the social zeitgeist of the word of, of influencer, yeah, yeah. what it is today. And we fall into that category and it, it is what it is, you know? But we have thoughts. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Helen here. You've been hearing me talk about Pampers for a while now on this podcast, the diaper brand that we've been using for our soon-to-be two-year-old. And for anyone out there who is still in the diaper phase of parenthood, this one is for you. We've been using Pampers Swathers and it's given us back several minutes of our lives. Why? Because Pampers Swathers prevents up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. Meaning we are not constantly changing our baby out of his clothes, cleaning up the mess afterwards, and doing several more loads of laundry than we prefer to. Swaddler's Diapers has a blowout barrier, which is an innovative back pocket in the diaper to help prevent messes from coming out. Pampers Swaddler's is always, always in stock in our household because when our baby is asleep for more than 11 hours, you know we gotta have an extra absorbent diaper for dry nights and less wake-ups in the middle of the night. With Pampers Swaddler's, you can rest assured that you have superior leak protection while keeping baby skin healthy. For trusted protection, trust Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. All right, next question. Next question. <laughs> Janet's turn again. All right. I'll go for a third one. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've mentioned in the past that with going into ABG full-time, you will be not as viable for a UX job since you'll be out of touch with the practice and skills. Do you ever think about returning to UX or how do you feel about it overall? This is a good question. And um, as much as I love what we do, the reality is there are certain periods where I go through like massive questioning mm. um, or just, you know, like thinking of like having you need to have like backup plans or like alternatives and things like that. From like day one, I think when we were talking about going into this full time, I had mentioned like, OK, um, you know, I might need to take on some like UX freelance projects or do mixed contract work. And that is something that I still keep in mind. And yeah, the fear was that once I'm out of the field for too long, you're not as like in touch with the newest programs, with the newest like patterns, with the newest like practices and, and things like that. But the thing about like technology is that it is so pervasive that I honestly think that UX, if you're, what your job is to do is to help make technology more usable and on a more like, um, I guess like, uh, tangible or like uh, ground level in the company when you have an engineer and you have like product or like account people the UX person tends to be the person in the middle to help facilitate that so mm -hmm. at any stage I think just with the like following the curve of like technology and how it affects every single industry there will always be a job in UX it may not be the company that I want it may not be the specific like type of UX I want or the industry but I think it's very possible to find um, to find some of that. It's just like, it's more the superficial levels of the career that I would be concerned mm -hmm. about. Like, am I getting the type of company name I want or like mm -hmm. the um, the title? And, and honestly, I think that like, I built a relationship with like, my career where I can look at it sometimes as a thing that I get meaning from and sometimes as just the thing that I need to get my financial backing from. So mm -hmm. I think in that way, um, yeah, I do where I've thought about that. But I think the more time that passes, the more I'm like, more like, okay, with like, um, you know, if even if I went back to UX, I would still continue to do ABG or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To feel a sense of meaning. So, yeah. yeah. Do you miss it though? Do you miss the actual job itself? Honestly, the th I mean, there were some moments, but um, I really, I think the the joy of 
doing something that is for yourself or like self-directed is a lot more meaningful to me. Mm, mm. Um, and the the parts of UX that I might have enjoyed, like I feel like we I can do that a lot with ABG, like or any type of thing that I miss, I could execute or like do a project in ABG with that. So mm. um, I mean, some of this, you know, security of like working in a company and things like that, or or just maybe some of the more stable because you could do UX and like. I don't know, different different industries that are just more like reliable and you know that it's going to be the same for like a while. Um, so that sometimes I miss. But the work itself, um, I feel like it's actually very trans, like I can do it. I'm doing similar stuff, I feel mm. like. Okay, okay, okay. Learning about each other. <laughs> do you ever feel burdened or awkward having significantly more followers than Janet and Mel? Damn, y'all hit me. I feel like I know who, who this came from too. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Um, I do not feel awkward about it. I think it is what it is. I think we are very open about that and we talk about it too. I think if anything, it, the, the part where it's like, do you feel burdened? I don't feel burdened in a sense where it's like, I don't, I don't know where that, I don't know how I would feel burdened mm. by it. The, the thing that I... My like mission, because obviously when we succeed as individuals, ABG succeeds. My thing is I want to help in any way that I can to build up, you know, your both of your guys' followings. If that is something that you want to do, which it, it is something that, you know, is a um, a goal of yours personally, right? So that's where perhaps I feel a little bit of not burden, but like just excitement of being excited about certain ideas that I see or like, oh, try this out, try this out. Like, that's what I feel. It's not a burden, though. Mm. I don't think it's a burden. If it's, Is it awkward? I don't think it's awkward. Do you think it's awkward? I don't know. We asked you this question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking it back. I don't, I don't think it's awkward. Or in what ways, maybe we give examples of in what ways it could feel awkward. Um, so say you go to an event mm -hmm. and everyone at that event has a certain level of followers or like mm. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then we're like with you and we're not at that level. Do you feel a bit of like awkwardness or obligation or something like, oh, like we're holding you back in mm -mm. some way? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, no. No, I've never thought of that before. If anything, I see us as like we are ABG and we're presenting a front of ABG. I don't think about our numbers as individuals. I think about you two are my best friends and we're here together. There's no part of me that thinks like, oh, yeah, you have less followers than me. So I got it. No. Yeah, I think I know. I feel like maybe we don't feel that. But sometimes the industry will 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 look at people that way and just as like a then, i think then as a quick we, way to I, judge. then i don't want to be involved with those type of people mm -hmm. you know like i'd rather not even be friends with those types of people if they were to judge my friends based off the followers that they have like that's that's a shitty person mm. you know so um i don't feel awkward and if anything it's more like let's raise each other up as much as we can and i will use whatever social clout <laughs> i hate that i'm not Whatever, whatever I have to like help build up ABG and um, and each one of us. So that's how I feel about that. Mm. I think the reason mm. the reason why you asked this question it was <laughs> it was it was it was approved by both of us. It was approved. I think sometimes with this world, um, Helen, obviously you have definitely like got to a place where you could get invited to certain events or do certain things, and I, I think you do such a good job in, of including us. I think for myself, sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm not deserving of that because I wasn't the one that got invited. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't reach that number to determine if I got that invite or I could get that thing that I'm always mm -hmm. like, oh, no, no, you, it's okay. Like, I don't need to be a part of it because this is your thing. Like, this is mm – -hmm. they invited you because they saw what you're capable of and all these things. So I was like, it's more for me. Like, I don't – it's just kind of like, oh, it's okay. I don't want to feel – don't want to make you feel obligated. Is yeah. That what that that's what I'm just I mean the burden the question came from it's like do you mm. feel burden because I I know you probably think oh I want my friends to like come along but I think sometimes more like well that's you got that you deserve that you enjoy it it's okay yeah but I think if I am um, personally extending the invite then I would want you to mm. be there mm -hmm. you know for both of you to be there and I there's um one thing that one of my old female partners had said to me where there was a program at EY for women partners to go through this program to mm. for for higher success of getting to a partner level mm. and I was like doesn't that make you feel weird that you're like you're getting help or like someone's you know you have a, an, an assigned mentor and like your male colleague doesn't have one and she's like I'm gonna take all the help I can get like I'm gonna get there mm. but I will take all the opportunities that come my way and that's gonna open more doors for me and allow me to get mm. to where I want to be so that's where I'm like if you're the invite is being extended or 
um, you're invited to these things, that's where you step your foot in that door. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's the only way to sort of network and get to know people and get to be more in that environment or that space. And yeah, but it's not a burden for me mm. at all. Yeah. Good to know. You got to take those opportunities when they come. Good question, though. The, mm. yeah, never, yeah. We never thought about this question before. Yeah. And we're answering it live. <laughs> <laughs> you feel good? Was that a satisfactory answer? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the story was actually a really good. I don't know if you call it analogy or whatever, yeah. but the way that you position it and you look at it is like this is meant to be like, A, I wouldn't invite you if I felt like it would be awkward. Yeah, yeah, I felt yeah. like mm-hmm. um, obligated or that it would make me uncomfortable. And then B, it's like I'm seeing this as I'm going to open as many doors for, can. for other. Yeah. Also, perhaps I have felt that way, too. Like I'm still mm. I'm I'm nowhere near where I want to be either, mm. you know. And I am continuing to take those opportunities where I don't feel like I deserve to be there sometimes, mm. right? Imposter syndrome, whatever. But I'm like, yeah. but I'm just going to go and see how and see what happens. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Keep that in mind. You shared about your challenging relationship with social media and how you implemented certain boundaries like deleting the app from your phone once in a while. How is your relationship with social media at the moment? Any new practices you implemented? I feel like I'm in a better place with social media. I think the whole deleting thing actually works to my advantage mm. where I kind of feel like when I delete it, it's like out of sight, out of mind. But then I'll, I'll, I'll add it back on when I need to like post something or check something and like, and then I'll sometimes like be on it and then I'll delete it for a few days again. So I feel like that boundary actually really helped me like establish like I'm not, I'm not inclined to go on it as much. Mm. Like that's why when we did the whole like a few episodes we're like what's your most use most use app and since Instagram wasn't on it I think I was like oh I had created this like boundary where I don't need to be on it as much as I used to I feel like I'm on it now in, in, in a very natural way mm-hmm. if it's downloaded on my phone I enjoy scrolling through reels and laughing and sending it to my friends but it, after a while where I feel like I catch myself just scrolling and just spending too much time I delete it instantly and then redownload if I need to post for ABG or whatever or like maybe I'm like oh I want to post something then I'll redownload it mm-hmm. so when you are on the app are you finding that your experience is more enjoyable and it's like a positive mm-hmm. versus like a negative mm-hmm. I think experience? so I think lately I've been in more like maybe it's because I enjoy sending reels or funny things to my friends that I actually enjoy opening up those messages and laughing like I have a lot of different friends that send me memes or whatever that that is like my source of like happiness. Sometimes I'm laughing. Mm. And so I associate that social media with a more like, ha 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 kind of like mentality versus like, oh my God, like comparing my, I'm actually comparing myself mm. much less now on social than I've ever had. Mm. That's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. But it's also more like I go to like get ideas for reels or things. So it just becomes like a, I don't know, it feels more like a happy place right now than mm. a bad place. Or if I see anything negative, I'm just like, sometimes I'll, I'll catch myself reading a comment like too many times, but then mm. I know that moment to delete it instantly. Mm. So it's like no i'm not gonna deal with that behavior yeah yeah cool good to good to know yeah. good to know thanks for the update yeah, yeah. that was a safe one for you i know <laughs> <laughs> okay let's ABG. do an abg one here maybe janet you can pick from our uh pyrex blow bowl <laughs> if you could relive one of the past six years of abg Ooh. which would it be and why i have an answer for this me too um it would be the first year for me oh mm. the first year the very first year first year not even full-time, like first year when we started, Mm. which would be in 2017. And I say that because it was such a stark contrast to what I was doing in my corporate job. Mm. I think with my corporate job, I was, you know, focusing on technical know-how, focusing on my soft skills of being more client-facing, of accuracy, and those things, that kind of like encompassed my whole life. Mm. And so with ABG, it flipped to the complete 180 Mm -hmm. of here I am able to be introspective. And I think throughout my whole life, I hadn't really paused to ask myself, like, how am I actually doing? What do I actually value? What do I, how do I think? How do I feel? So ABG was the first time that I actually did that. And I will say that first year showed me the possibility of what that type of a career or lifestyle could Mm. be. And I think it also showed me that there is something about my voice where it is what I say is worthwhile. It's it's worthy of being, to- like my stories are worthy of being told. Mm. There's value to what I have to say. So, and I never felt that way before. Mm. So that was the first time I said to myself, this is the first time that I can actually start, you know, taking that turn towards like happiness mm. with this, with this company. So first year for me, it was also very exciting and just like, what the fuck's going to happen, you know? Mm. So it was a good year. Yeah. Oh man. What so was yours? My year might be 2018, 2019. I think uh, mm-hmm. looking past at our back at our photos, I whatever the year we did the LA meetup, the SF meetup, 
and then going to Toronto, I feel like that was, I kind of feel like we're on this like high, like I can't mm-hmm. describe it. Like, I think we just found our groove with ABG. We're still working full time. Right. Mm-hmm. But we found this like, I guess, groove that we just yeah. were riding and we, we got it down. And I think those moments, like seeing all our fans and our listeners, like congregate in one room was like, kind of like a whoa moment for me that I still can't believe happened mm. and maybe it's because it was one of our first few times doing it that it was like so memorable for me this is interesting yeah I'm like having flashbacks as you mm-hmm. are telling your stories um my my year I had two years actually so it would either be 2017 which is the build-up before we actually even released because mm-hmm. we worked for most of that year to to create something before we set it out into the world in September like at the end of the year it would either be that or um 2020 which is when we went full time mm-hmm. and the pandemic happened and we had to like sharp pivot our our plans and i i think it's because i realized that i enjoy i really love the phase when something goes from concept to like reality and that's where like you know 2017 was us like we said podcasting, but like, what was the brand? How were you going to mm. do it? What were you going to talk about? It, it just like, it's really exciting to do the like idea to like thing. And then I think 2020 was also, it was, we just changed so much. So there was just a lot of doing new things and figuring out how to make it work. So I found that really like exciting. And so it's like every new period we have, like I'm kind of feeling that again with mm. what we're doing now mm-hmm. when we have something new to do from like scratch and nothing. It's like really yeah, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you could gift yourself something right now, what would it be? Huh. If I could gift myself something, I think I want a massage. It's just like <laughs> so, so simple. <laughs> um, I've been moving around a lot and sleeping on a lot of different mattresses. And, uh, and my schedule has been all over the place too with like sleep schedule. So I just feel, I don't know. I, I, I cringe to say this, but like my back because like, um. or like, yeah, just shoulder pain. So I would, I would do a massage. It'd be nice. Do you have time after this recording? I guess I could. I could. I was going to, I was going to maybe use this weekend. Actually, maybe mm. I'll do, I'll book one this weekend. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or there's a great one down the street from here. I have, and I went to the one that you recommended. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. good and it's cheap. Okay. <laughs> yes. Actually, yes. I think. <laughs> Manifest Thank it, girl. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I should go with you. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, I'll, need, I'll, you definitely need. I was gonna be like, oh, we have a meeting at four, Jay. So maybe oh shoot, we do. So she yeah, probably yeah. can't do no, it. No, today. no, no. Yeah, if yeah. we're done at two, it. Oh, I'll have time do to do a go sixty minute one. I, I'll do it after. I'll do it after. Yeah. Or I'll do okay. it. I'll schedule for this weekend because I have. I have. I'm feeling good right now. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Though. Cool. After going to therapy in 2020, have you had any more follow up sessions? I have not anymore. Actually, I have. That was a period of time where I was going to therapy like a lot. And I think that was very eye-opening as to what therapy can do for someone. It was the first time that I really felt that therapy can change, like, the the chemical makeup of your brain, Mm -hmm. which is just insane, right? It's, like, the best thing that I ever did. And I think I put everything into it during that Mm -hmm. period of time. I'm not going to say I fixed everything, but I think I got to a really good state after a very intense period of therapy. So I I think there were was like one other time that I did better help for a little bit to just like try it out and did a few sessions, but then after that I was like, okay, I think I'm pretty good. Mm. You know. And I think I I still feel pretty good right now. I, um I feel like my husband is someone who I he's my my therapist. <laughs> but it's not too I know when I need therapy, I will mm. say. Um and I think I'm okay for, for now. I am really, really happy to hear that. And what was interesting to hear you say is like you went through a really intensive period where you put all of yourself in that. And the thing that I've learned is like you get out of therapy like what you put in. Mm -hmm. And so um, like knowing that you took away from that experience a real – it sounds like like a base shift. And like basically they they always kind of use this analogy like therapy gives you a toolkit. Mm -hmm. So you know you're going to go through humps in life and different things. But when it happens, when you go through and you actually put in work in therapy and you you do it intensively, like then you have like you know – generally how to like combat things or even just how to be aware yeah of mm-hmm. you, like something happening yeah. before it gets to a point mm-hmm. that's like not the most enjoyable so absolutely absolutely you learn the different the toolkit one part that you mentioned is like actually very applicable to mm-hmm. post therapy life yeah where totally. it's like oh i know how to these are the different cbt things or you know dbt db i can't say that db dbt things um that you can pull you know so that's been helpful Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thanks for asking the question. (laughs) 
Janet. Oh, damn it. I realized, <laughs> I realized to not follow up too much because you'll know who asked it. So I'm just, just, I'm just kind of more silent now. Hmm. Okay. Mel Mel. Hot bot or your ideation skills, which would you choose? In a man? Wait, what? Like, do I choose in my... I want a hot body or my ideation or like I want that guy in the man. Let's do both. <laughs> you just said I want a guy in a man? What? But <laughs> in a man. Okay, so I will confess that was a joint question. Maybe it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I really I, should have changed the pronoun at the beginning instead of my. I, or I think that's what, when I read the question, I was like, what? <laughs> but I, I, then yeah. I got it. It's like, uh, what would you rather have in a man? Oh, no, I meant in her yourself. Oh, in herself. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> because it says hot bod or... Wait, I don't... Wait, can you read the question? It says, okay, <laughs> ladies. Janet. <laughs> hot bod or your ideation skills? Dash. Which one would you choose? Parentheses. In a man? <laughs> I Because I put your ideation skills. Like, I... Oh, see, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. hers or the yeah, dudes? Yeah. Oh, hers. So, well, your, I, your hot bod... What? No, I'm confused. I'm gonna I thought answer, I knew. Can I answer the way I perceive it? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, for myself, if I would rather choose a hot body... Or my ideation skills, I would choose my ideation skills. And not saying that your body is not hot. But, but I understand that question because I think yeah. that obviously in my mini show I shared like my insecurity. Yeah, yeah. It's and coming it's like, from that. Oh my god, yeah. I hope that was not oh, no, the fine. interpretation. You're fine. But you do have a hot bod. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, that just got. <laughs> but I meant your idea of a yeah. like. I a, you know. I think for me, <laughs> sorry, Janet, like <laughs> sorry, <that's> <laughs> correct. <laughs> it's fine. So for myself, I would choose ideation. Surprisingly, I'm like really proud of my ideation skills. That's surprising. surprising. It's not surprising. I think it's yeah. like I know I'm good at it, but I'm like really proud of myself for it. So I'm like, I'd rather have that. I'm also proud and thankful that you have those skills. Yeah. Thank you. But what about the in the man part? Yeah. I think that's the two separate questions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, okay I'm, you know what? I think with this question with the man, I'm thinking about two extremes. Like, mm. imagine a man that's very, very, very not my type. Like oh. physically, but has all the ide all the ideation skills. I would probably be like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But then, they, like, he, like give me a man who's like all my type, body, and it's like no ideation. That's <laughs> tough. Like I, or maybe they have skills in other areas, and it doesn't mm. have to be just ideation. Maybe they're really smart, but just not a good ideator. That's so. True. That's I mean, I'm just trying to help you out. Here. I know. It's, like, yeah, this is hard. Like I'm thinking about my boyfriend. Like he has, he's both. Oh, I know. So it's kind of like, what is he more of? I don't want to say. Yeah, I was gonna say. I don't know if there's a. Reason. I don't know. If there, I, I don't know if I can choose one. Because <laughs> he's a producer. He has really smart ideas, and he's like really good at that. But he's other other skills that aren't ideation, though. Mm. So mm. I don't. I'm also just. I'm gonna never. I'm say. I can't say this out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's like inappropriate. Every time Mel says that, I want to. Know. That's another. She's way trying to, to say it. like he's really hot too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? We're not keeping that in. Yes, we are. No. Meaning you you want it more. Probably. Okay. You know? So you're leaning towards hot the hot a little bod. bit. Okay. Yeah. But I There's think, I think wrong he would that. appreciate that comment right now. I think or the it, context of what you Maybe, but I feel like he's like he like is really like he likes to talk about things. So I'm just like, maybe not. Okay. okay. Anyways. It's a good balance. Yeah. You have yeah. a good balance there, Ray. He's gonna be like this fucking girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A B G. Here, you can pick the A B G one. Okay. If you could create another role or team member to add on to the ABG team, what would it be? That's a really great question. So we just had our retreat and we do have pretty big plans in place, which I'm very excited for. But this is, might be one of the first, no, this is not the first time, but it, there's a clear business plan or potential that will require more people. Mm -hmm. And I think the areas where we'll need the most help, one, I would say social is mm -hmm. probably one that um, we do have Ashley right now. She's our so our social coordinator. Is that what her yeah. title? Coordinator. And she is amazing. But I think for the scale of what we want to produce, we would probably need to bring on one more person. I think on the production side, podcast production is another one. Um, video editor, um, content creation, which would be social media. But mm -hmm. those are probably the ones that I can think of off the top of my head right now. Mm. So yeah. only one though, right? Was that? Yeah. But... Oops. Okay. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm literally on the same page as Helen. Yeah. So I. What's the most immediate one though? My first immediate reaction is I think we need a producer or production yeah. coordinator because for a producer, actually probably an associate producer because I need so I feel like for ABG we've been creating content weekly for almost like six years now and I think we're still coming in with fresh ideas for episodes. But imagine someone who could expand that mentality and 
think of nuanced ways to talk about topics and identify guests. Because the reality is that as we have grown, we are, all three of us are touching like so many different projects. Our brain is literally sliced. Having someone dedicated to just thinking about like ideas for content or whatever, whether it's video or audio, will be super helpful for us. I also see us to hire, like bringing on someone that we're going to be inspired by because they'll like, I think fresh energy brings up, adds more to the mix. Mm -hmm. So I, for now, my immediate thought for a role would be like associate producer or someone in production. Producer role mostly though. And development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a developmental producer, yeah. I mean, those are definitely um, very much in, not even in the works yet. So just just talking about it, um, but hopefully getting some of you excited out there for a potential role if you're interested. In joining um, our team. In joining our team. We are looking to expand one day soon. So keep your eye out on the socials. I can't say that word sometimes. So you said show, 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 show. <laughs> she sells keep seashells your- by the seashells. Seashore. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was, everything was pronounced correctly. Girl, yeah, I was impressed. Just the wrong word at the end. And the seashells. That's crazy. Probably on there and they're like, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're all by my list being, sorry. Um, but yes, keep your eye out on the uh, so shoals. <laughs> All right, so we actually do have a few more questions we haven't answered, and I really am keen on answering them, but we are running out of time for today's episode, so I want to suggest that we do a part two for this. Okay. Um, I'm curious. Ooh, do we have to keep these anonymous? Yeah. Do we yeah. keep them here it's on our new set? I know. <laughs> Maybe we hide them under the couches that are part of the old set. Are you going to go searching for them, though? No, okay. I don't have time to go searching for these. <laughs> All right, well, okay, we'll come do our, back to this office and <laughs> we'll do our best to not peek at the questions. I'm so tempted, like right in front of me. I know, but anyways, we'll do part two in the future. Um, and thank you for joining us our, at our new home. I know. Yeah. We hope you like it as yeah. much as we love it. Tune in again next Thursday because we do release every Thursday on YouTube, and we also release our mini shows on Tuesdays. You can catch it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere, and it's a more like specific focus of different things that we're interested in individually. Yeah, and if you have any other questions for us also – questions you've always been dying to ask us let us know in the comments of our latest instagram posts or dm us or send us an email hello at asianbossgirl.com and with that we will catch you all on the next episode bye Bye.